So this is 8.4 continued. Now here we have this kind of integral. Now if I rewrite this, I can rewrite it as the square root of x squared plus 1 cubed times dx. And so I notice that I have x squared, a variable squared, plus a value, okay? So in this case, your u is going to be x and your a is going to be 1. 1 squared is still 1. So in that case, when I'm adding the inside of the radicand, I'm going to use the substitution x equals a, which is 1, times tangent theta, which is just tangent theta. So then dx is going to be the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared theta d theta. And the radical will become a secant theta. So let's substitute everything in here. So I do need to substitute the radical in there. Oh, I don't need to write a. a is 1. But when you multiply it by secant, it's just secant. And so again, this shouldn't be a squared, it should be 1, and u squared should be x squared, which is what I have there. So this radical part is going to become secant theta, and dx is going to become secant squared theta d theta. So when I'm done simplifying this, I'm actually going to have most of these cancel, and I'm just going to end up with 1 over secant theta. Well, the reciprocal of secant is cosine. And the integral of cosine is sine theta plus c. Now, the only thing here is that we don't have a conversion to go back into x with what we've got here. So we've really got to draw that triangle. Okay, so if I draw the triangle here, theta. Remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite would be x, the adjacent would be 1, and then this would be x squared plus 1, square root of x squared plus 1, according to the Pythagorean theorem. So if I'm looking for sine, then that means I need the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to have x over the square root of x squared plus 1. And since I've already integrated and everything, this is the final answer. Now we can go ahead and move on with the next example. So here we have x over this here. Now there's a problem here because this is not in the correct form. So we need to put it into the correct form, which means we need to complete the square. So if I go off to the side, I can complete the square here by taking half of 12, which is 6, and squaring it, which is 36. And if I add it and I subtract it, that should help keep things equivalent. So this part will become x minus 6 squared. This part will become minus 4. So then if I rewrite my integral, I have x over the square root of x minus 6 squared minus 4 dx. So in this case, u is going to be x minus 6, and a is going to be 2. 2 squared is 4. So since I have u squared minus a squared, I need to use the third set of substitutions which means that u, x minus 6, should equal a secant theta. Now, they didn't tell me much about my x values, so I don't know if my, um, my x values are in fact, um, I don't know whether u minus 3 is less than or greater than. When you're not sure, you can go ahead and just use um, the positive, okay? 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our substitution and let's see, du or dx, derivative of this side would just be dx and zero. And then derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. And then we know that the square root u squared minus a squared should equal a tangent theta. We're going to assume that x is greater than 2 because if it were less than 2, um, we might end up with the, a negative number inside our radical here. Mm-hmm. So let's do all of our substitutions. Again, this is all our side work. Now be careful, this is just x, and what we have here is an expression for x minus 6. But we can manipulate that and say that x is 2 secant theta plus 6. So my numerator, I'm going to get 2 secant theta plus 6. And in my denominator, I'm going to get to replace that with 2 tangent theta. And so then here, I think the best way to deal with this is to split the fraction and then maybe convert it to sines and cosines. So if I split this fraction here, I'm going to get 2 over 2 is just 1. So I'm going to have 1 over cosine theta divided by sine theta over cosine theta. Plus 6 over 2 is 3. And then I'm going to have sine theta over cosine theta, d theta. That means these cosines are going to reduce. And I'm just going to end up with 1 over sine theta plus 3 cosine theta over sine theta d theta. Now that may not have helped me because I don't think, actually I do, I do have a rule here. So let me split this up because I do have a rule that says, um, well, no, that's secant, cosecant times cotangent. I do have one for cosecant for this part here, but I don't have one for, oh yeah, I do have one for cotangent as well. So let's simplify this into cosecant theta plus three cotangent theta, d theta. So what we end up with for cosecant theta is going to be negative ln of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. And then what I get for cotangent is ln of sine theta. And then of course plus c because it is an indefinite integral. And now I've got to put everything back in there. So I am going to need my um, triangle for that. So if x minus 6 over 2 is secant theta, then that means, remember, secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, which means this side is going to be the x minus 6 squared minus 4. So when I go back in here, I am going to have cosecant theta, which should be hypotenuse over the opposite. So the hypotenuse over the opposite. Plus cotangent which should be adjacent over the opposite.
and then sine should be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then plus C. Now you could simplify that or you could just type it in there. Um, I think the only thing that I want to do here is just simplify this numerator here. But the rest of it, I'll pretty much leave it like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Unless you're given specific instructions on how they want the final answer to look, um, once you've integrated it, you can just stop. If they give you specific directions, then be sure to follow those specific directions. But in this case, they just wanted us to integrate it, and we have. So we're finished.